In today's video, I'm going to be reacting to Bucky Brooks of NFL.com's Mock Draft 3.0. Now, I'm just going to preface with this. There are no trades that went down in this draft, but there are some really, really intriguing uh, picks in this mock draft, including a top quarterback falling outside of the top 10. So stick around to see who that is. But if you're pumped up for the NFL draft, I need you to like this video. It will be here before you know it. So drop a like, that way you can be not or you can be around for all of our draft coverage. And on top of that, that way you can join our live NFL draft coverage all three rounds. It's a ton of fun. Like the video. Let's kick it over to the first overall pick, Caleb Williams to the Chicago Bears. No surprises there, even despite him rocking some lip gloss and pink nails. The Bears are still rolling with him as QB1. Now Jaden Daniels going to quarterback two route. A lot of people are saying maybe Drake May's QB2, maybe even J.J. McCarthy's number two. But Bucky Brooks is saying Jane Daniels headed over to Washington. J.J. McCarthy, he jumps into the top three for the New England Patriots. They get their quarterback, and Gerard Mayo is going to have his guy to run his offense. Marvin Harrison Jr., Maserati Marv, mocked over to the Arizona Cardinals to give Kyler Murray an extra pass catcher because God knows he needs it. And if you are a real one, you know that I got a pick six off of Kyler Murray in high school. But let's kick it over to Bucky Brooks on J.J. McCarthy here. And as to why he went in the third overall selection, given Tom Brady's success with the Patriots, taking McCarthy, the best quarterback in Michigan Wolverine history, could be the move for Elliot Wolf. Despite his inexperience as a passer, McCarthy's athleticism, intangibles, and winning pedigree could fit Gerard Mayo's profile for a quarterback one. Now, why you might want to go with J.J. McCarthy, here's five reasons. All he's done is win since high school, in college. Hell, even in, in, in Pee Wee, in middle school, I guarantee you this guy didn't lose in that many games. I'm telling you, he was running around in a Pop Warner League Winning 70-3 to three against your favorite team. He's also a guy who could be the face of a franchise. He bodes a lot of leadership qualities, and he is a very smart and intellectual player. And I think that he's a guy that's not going to cause you any sort of problems off the field as well. On top of that, he can make every throw. Just because Michigan didn't ask him to make every throw, he can. He's actually extremely accurate with his deep ball. He actually has a very high completion percentage on a lot of those intermediate and short throws. And I know a lot of people like to say, oh, he's a check down Charlie. Well, when you're Michigan and that's all you have to do to win, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. He is a gutsy playmaker. He's not afraid to air it out deep and he's not afraid to throw some challenging balls. Again, you didn't see a ton of that, but that doesn't mean he can't do it. And he does have a lot of potential. And that it factor, that X factor, he is a winner, like that first point. He legitimately has won everywhere that he has played. So the NFL may be something that doesn't change there. But let's talk about the next pick, Joe Alt, the offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. I believe he is the number one offensive lineman in this draft. Surpri I've seen a lot of mock drafts uh, get him to the Tennessee Titans later. However, in this one, he's going number five overall. Malik Neighbors, arguably wide receiver one, dare I say. He's going to give Daniel Jones a little extra help as another pass catcher because God knows that the Giants need help in the receiving game. It, had, it worked out once with an LSU receiver. Maybe it'll work out again. Penn State's offensive tackle, Olu Fashanu, is headed to the Music City. And Dallas Turner, a very common pick for the Atlanta Falcons at number eight. He is headed to the Falcons in the Dirty but let's talk about Malik Neighbors versus Marvin Harrison Jr. Because I think there's an argument to make for both of these players in terms of who's wide receiver one, who's wide receiver two. I mean, the numbers, the receptions, the yards, they both favor Malik Neighbors. They're tied at touchdowns, so give them that. But the average and the long favor Marvin Harrison Jr. So that's something that I want to kind of throw your way. Really quick question, we'll keep it moving. Who's wide receiver one? Just give me a Marv for Maserati Marvin Harrison or give me a Malik for Malik Neighbors out of LSU. Can't wait to see what you got to say. Another wide receiver taken off the board for the Bears at number nine, Roma Dunze, a big-bodied guy that I think is going to be great in this league. Brock Bowers, tight end 
Number 10 overall, headed up to New Jersey, playing with Robert Salah in the New York Jets. Aaron Rodgers, we got you another pass catcher, my friend, to go along Garrett Wilson. Here's a crazy one. Drake May, number 11 overall to the Minnesota Vikings. So not only did he fall outside of the top 10, the Vikings, who have been rumored to have some interest in him, didn't have to move up. But let's go to the next pick. Jared Verse, he's going to give Sean Payton a little extra pep in that defense step. Maybe he's kind of a Cam Jordan type player. Maybe Sean Payton's looking to recreate that kind of uh, production with Jared Verse in Denver, in the Mile High City. But I really like that pick for the Broncos. And I'm just going to say this about Drake May. There's just no way in hell that he's falling outside of the top 10. I, there's just no way. I, I do not see a world where Drake May will be available at pick number 11. Maybe he falls to number 5. Maybe he falls to number 6. That's a possibility. But he's not falling outside of the top 10. And I also do believe, speaking of Jared Verse, I think he's going to have a spectacular career. In, in my opinion, he is the best edge rusher and the best defensive player in this draft class. Like, I love what Jared Verse can do. I love the intangibles about him. And I love the possibility and the things that he might be able to do in his NFL career. If he, fit, if he gets uh, to a good team where he'll be a good fit, this guy could have a very long and very successful career. But let's go back to the quarterback conversation. I want you to just pick a quarterback for me. Obviously, Caleb Williams is number one. But out of these three guys, who do you like the most? J.J. McCarthy, type J.J. Jaden Daniels, type J.D. For Drake May, give me a DM. Don't slide in my DMs. Let's kick it back over to the mock draft. Talisi Fuaga is headed to the Sin City to go protect Aiden O'Connell, Ryan Tannehill, whoever the hell their quarterback's going to be. At least they got an offensive lineman. New Orleans, they need all the offensive lineman help they can get. Ryan Ramchek, the right tackle, might have to retire. Trevor Penning at the left tackle spot, looking like he might be a bust. J.C. Latham. Plugs in at one of those tackle positions, and that's who he had the Saints selecting. Gwynion Mitchell, I love this player out of Toledo. I think he could be a really big impact player for the Colts defense. I like what Indianapolis is doing. It seems like they have some of the pieces there to be a successful team offensively, but let's get them more pieces on the defensive side of the ball. Now Seattle is going to keep a Washington guy, or uh, yeah, he's going to keep a Washington guy around and go get Troy Fontenot to go boost up that offensive line. He's a versatile player, can play inside, has a little bit of experience on the outside, but he's just a great offensive lineman. I think could be a really good fit on some very specific teams. Seattle is bringing in some offensive line help for Geno Smith. Now, before we keep this thing moving, I want to just get a quick plug-in for our draft hats. Obviously, these are the 2024 NFL draft hats, and if you want to get one for your team, Go to chatsports.com slash NFL Draft Hats. The link is in the comment section. It's also in the description of this video. Multiple styles, multiple colors. Most of them come in a black or that like dark gray. Then you have the uh, curved bill. You got a flat bill. And on top of that, some of them also come in the team-specific colors. So if you want to go get geared up, click the link in the comment section and description of this video. That way you can be prepared for the season. All right, Tarion Arnold. <clears throat> he is a really quality cornerback. And he is headed to Duval. Trey sticking around in the SEC country, and he's headed to Jacksonville. Brian Thomas Jr., a really sneaky good wide receiver. Honestly, I think there's arguments for him to be made, or to be made for him to be wide receiver three or four. Brian Thomas Jr. is going to go and connect with Jamar Chase. Get that Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, LSU Bengals love going. Keep it moving, baby. Byron Murphy the second. This big old man, there's your replacement for Aaron Donald, Rams fans. I know all six of you were really upset to see that Aaron Donald retired. However, Byron Murphy is a big defensive tackle that can play that spot and fill in for Aaron Donald. Amarius Mims, a really quality right tackle. He took all of his snaps in college at the right tackle position for the Bulldogs. I think that going and getting Justin Fields slash Russell Wilson some extra protection is a really good idea. And I talked to our chat sports host, Jack Sperry, about this pick. He absolutely loved it as well. And really quick reminder before we just finish out these last handful of picks, 
I encourage you to subscribe. That way you can get more NFL videos on your YouTube feed. If you subscribe, it's 100% free. You get daily coverage around the NFL, the NBA, and college sports entirely. So lock us in. If you hate it after seven days, I promise you won't. You can unsubscribe. But let's go to the Miami Dolphins. They're going with an interior offensive lineman, Jackson Powers Johnson. Maybe that one's a little bit of a reach, but Dolphins could use some offensive line help. Kool-Aid McKinstry. This is an interesting one because if you ask me, I think Kool-Aid McKinstry is the better cornerback, so I would take him over Terry and Arnold. However, you're telling me that the Eagles get yet another elite defender from the SEC. F you, Howie Roseman. You just keep on winning. Cooper DeGene. I had the pleasure of talking with his dad out at the NFL Combine. He is a really cool guy, a really cool family, and I love the player that he is. On top of that, he is coming back from that injury that he suffered in the season. So we'll see how things progress. I do think that he is a first-round pick still, though. Graham Barton. I love this selection for the Dallas Cowboys. It's not a sexy one, but it's a necessary pick. They lost Tyron Smith in free agency. They needed some offensive line help, and that should help you protect Dak Prescott at least a little bit more. Peyton Wilson, one of the top linebackers in this draft class. He's headed from NC State up to Green Bay. Leitu Latu. I don't know how in the hell he managed to fall to 26 in this mock draft because Latu is a freak, and his production is absolutely insane. A really cool story, and I love this player. To be honest, him in Tampa Bay is a good pick. Darius freaking Robinson. If you don't know him, you better get familiar because this guy is talented. He's headed down to the desert, according to Bucky Brooks, in this mock draft. And I think that he has a lot of really intriguing aspects and intangibles and a, re a really, really interesting profile. Jerzon Johnny Newton, the defensive tackle out of Illinois, arguably the top defensive tackle in this draft. He falls to Buffalo at number 28 overall. I'm sure Buffalo, if this pick was there, they would be jumping with joy, foaming at the mouth, running up the draft card to si turn this one in. But I want to kick it back to uh, Darius Robinson. Because I kind of get Cam Jordan vibes from Robinson. I think that he's a player that, if you, I'm not going to say you need to shed some weight, but like if he were to get a little bit quicker, he would be a Cam Jordan. Literally copy and paste. The relative athletic score is how he tested at the combine. Shows he's a freak athlete. The weight could be a little bit more according to them, but I kind of like him at that weight. The height, it's impressive. The vertical and broad jump were explosive. And the 40-yard dash time, pretty impressive. The 20-yard split, 10-yard split, you guys can see on your screen. The relative athletic score is very friendly for Darius Robinson, and I think that he is a sneaky good player for whoever drafts him in 2024. Now, Chop Robinson, probably the best name in this draft, arguably uh, outside of Kool-Aid McKinstry. He is a really scrappy and really uh, intriguing player. A lot more of a upside and intangibles kind of guy because the production did lack. However, he's called pork chop for a reason. The dude is very sturdy. The dude is very hard to move. He's a good football player. Tyler Guyton, the offensive tackle out of Oklahoma. I've been seeing a lot of second round buzz for him, but Bucky Brooks is having him head out to Baltimore to protect Lamar Jackson. And then Nate Wiggins shores up that defensive unit in San Francisco, which Arguably is one of the best in the league. However, they could use a little bit of cornerback help. Nate Wiggins from Clemson, shout out to producer Chip, going to make it happen. And Kamari Lassiter, to round things out, is headed to Arrowhead to probably win a few Super Bowls in his career. Now, who is your favorite draft prospect in the 2024 NFL Draft? You can be a homer and pick a guy from your favorite college team. But I want you guys to let me know who your favorite is in this draft. For me, I love Jaden Daniels. I think he's a very fun player. Man, Leitu Latu and Jared Verse, they are some scrappy and some very fun players to watch. So those might be who I'm writing down. But this is your turn to sound off. Y'all have a wonderful weekend.